The Sony PlayStation 3 has a fantastic library of great games, all waiting for you to play them. And with a homebrewed console, you can use your backup files on its hard drive to enjoy them right now. So, let's hack the PS3. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Sony PlayStation 3 uh, was launched at the end of 2006 and this was Sony's entry into the seventh generation of consoles. So it was competing against Microsoft Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii and it did actually have a shaky start because it came in with a very high price tag of $599. But it did manage to then build its following as the model range developing and it ended up becoming the 8th best selling console ever. Now this of course does mean that it had a fantastic catalogue of games and these are all then ready for us to try out right now. So at the moment um, you can actually pick up a working system with controllers for around about £60 on eBay and this actually represents a really great deal. So the system is very easily hackable and you can either do that as a full custom firmware hack or using what's known as PS3 Hen. Now PS3 Hen is a PS3 homebrew enabler and that allows you to run homebrew firmware on your PS3 and, and doing this lets you use a wide range of homebrew apps. Now this isn't a complete system hack and it doesn't give you the full features of a custom firmware installation but it does let you play your um, PS3 games from your disk backup files. It also lets you play PS2 and PS1 games and use a whole range of other homebrew apps. So, so pretty much everything that you'd actually want to do with your hacked PS3 anyway. But, but the really big advantage of PS3 Hen is that it will work with any PS3 model. So FAT, the slim model I have here, or even then the super slim model. Now, now custom firmware hacks can only be installed on FAT and early slim models. So if you don't have one of those, or if you have the super slim, then this really is your only choice. So in this project, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with PS3 Hen and then how to start playing any game from your disk backup files. So let's get into that. Now before we get started, there's one thing you might want to consider. So we're gonna be storing a lot of data and probably these of course are going to be game files and we're gonna be storing those on the internal hard drive on our console. Now, now you can obviously use external drives, um, but it is actually a lot easier and a lot neater to use that internal hard drive bay. Now most PS3 units came with a fairly small hard drive, at least by today's standards. Uh, so it is probably worth upgrading yours so you have enough space for all your files. Now, now once you've hacked the system, you're going to want to load a lot of games and these are really very quickly going to eat up that hard drive space. Now you can use any 2.5 inch SATA hard drive or an SSD and I have made a video explaining the whole process, so please do have a look at that. Now in the video, I will also show you how to back up your existing hard drive and move your game save data and everything else onto your new drive. So, so please do have a look through that. So let's get going with our PS3 Hen installation then. So first off, we need to get a few things ready for the installation process. So you're going to need uh, first of all, you of course need a PlayStation 3 and that needs to be running firmware version 4.91 or, or lower. Um, so at the time of making of this video, the PS3 Hen version um, covers all firmware versions up to 4 and including 4.91. Now, um, PS3 Hen versions are made to specific um, firmware version numbers uh, and as Sony releases new firmware then the PS3 Hen software does need to be updated to match it. So if your firmware when you go to hack yours is higher than the one specified in the PS3 Hen website then you're going to have to wait for that update to be released and they are very good at, at turning those around very quickly. Now if you don't know what software version you're running on your PS3 then simply go into your settings section on your XMB and go to the system settings 
and then scroll all the way down to near the bottom and find the system information um, option. And then you should see your, ver your firmware version number listed in there. Now you're also going to need an original Sony PS3 controller and you're going to need the mini USB cable that allows that to connect directly to your console. Um, one of the um, areas where we need to boot into safe mode requires that. You're also going to need your PS3 connected up to the internet. Um, so we are going to need to download some files and access some websites on it. You're going to need a PC um, that allows you then to download some software and that's going to have to be able to prepare a USB drive. And then you're going to need an FAT32 formatted USB drive. Now I have made a video showing you the full drive formatting process and that will make sure that you get the correct FAT32 setup. So please do have a look at that if you're not quite sure how to prepare your USB. Now, as we'll be overriding the firmware on the PS3, there are a few tweaks that we need to make to the console. So if you power on, uh, these tweaks are found in the settings section under system settings. So if you scroll down, you'll find the auto update feature and that needs to be turned off. And that's so that your console doesn't then try to update its firmware after we've installed PS3 Hen. Um, if, if, if it was to overwrite that, um, then the mod would be overwritten and you need to go back and reinstall everything again. And of course, that's not what we want happening. We'll also need to set the display what's new to off as well. So, so this setting just simply controls what the console displays when it boots up. Um, so it automatically goes to the What's New section on the XMB. Um, so if we turn that off, it will allow the PS3 Hen to skip that page and take you directly then to the um, menu button, which will allow you to enable the PS3 Hen software. And, and this is something that you have to click each time that you reboot the machine fr from power up. So once we've got those two settings changed, we're now ready to go off and grab some software. So the main website that we'll be using is the PS3 exploit site. Uh, again, make sure you um, see that that exploit is spelt without an E. Um, now this is a great resource for PS3 hacking, and I do recommend that you have a look at what's on this site. So the team here are responsible for creating and updating the code, as well as maintaining the online enabler system that we'll be using in a while. Now, they do not charge for any of this work, so all of their costs are covered by voluntary donations. So, so please do consider donating a few coins just to help them out with server costs and so on. So if you have a look on this page, you'll notice that there are two versions listed. We have an official firmware version and a hybrid firmware version. So we're going to be using the hybrid firmware. Um, that is one that combines some extra software into the official firmware version and includes a, a hackable browser, which makes the whole process of installing and enable, enabling our PS3 hands so much easier. So that's, that, that's the one we're going to be going for. So you should find then a direct link to download the latest HFW version. So if you click that link and nothing happens, then don't worry that the file type that we're downloading probably isn't recognized. So just use your right mouse button to click the link on a Windows PC and then select the save link as button, um, option to download the file. Now, I'm not sure what button you use on a Mac to do that same process, but, uh, but th th that's how you um, will need to download this file. Now, you may also then get a warning um, or a block download message. So if you do get that, um, simply go up to your browser downloads page and then just simply verify that you actually do want to download and keep this file. Um, it, if, it, if it is warning about it being um, unrecognized or, or, or dubious file, then, then, then don't, don't worry about that. It, it's really just because we're downloading a .pub file, which isn't really recognized by the system. So once you've got past all of that, then just simply save that file somewhere sensible on your PC. Now, you'll probably have noticed on the PS3 exploit page that there is a big red warning message about the factory service mode and the CCAPI. Now, now, factory service mode is a mode that you can put the PS3 into, but you do need to have some specialist knowledge and some tools to do that.
um, the Control Console API. That is a homebrew app that lets you control certain features, um, but you do need a custom firmware modded PS3. Um, so if you do run that or, or, or go into factory service mode um, when you are using a PS3 hen system, you can actually damage your console. So again, th these are not something you will do by accident. Um, but I say, just be aware um, that if you do ever get tempted to do that, um, just please do not do it. So now that we've actually got hold of our hybrid firmware file, um, because we'll be using this to update our console firmware, we do need to make sure that it is completely correct and that the code is valid. Now, if, if, if it's not, if we have a corrupted file come down, we could brick our console. So we're going to check it by doing an MD5 signature check. So if you head across to this page, and again, I'll put this link down in the description. This is the release thread for the firmware. Um, but um, in here, you, you will find, of course, a link off to the PS3 exploit website to download the file. But we also then have this all important MD5 value. Um, so to check the signature and to check a checksum, um, we do need to generate the MD5 checksum from the file that we've just downloaded on our PC. So um, you need to head across to this checksum generation site, and there are a couple around, but again, I'll put a link to this particular one in, in the description down below. So to use the same, we do need to first of all check a few settings. So the input type needs to be file, the output encoding needs to be set to hex, and the HMAC needs to be turned off or disabled. So you then simply need to click on the input box and go off and select your file. Or, or, or if you've got it open in your um, Explorer, you can simply drag it into this box here. And what will happen then is that the web page will upload that to their website and then calculate this MD5 value. Now, that, now, once that comes up in the output box down below, you just simply need to check that against the value that we saw on that um, release page. Now, if they do match, then you're good to go. If if they don't match, just simply go back and re-download the file until you get um, one that generates the correct MD5 value. Now, next, we're going to need some homebrew apps to actually use on our PS3. Now, most likely, the reason that you're doing this PS3 hen hack is that you're going to want to play PS3 games from your legally obtained backup files. So we're going to install a game launcher called Multiman. And, th and this does has a few other features that will become in, be, be useful for us as well. So the, the best place to get hold of these um, homebrew apps for the PS3 is the Brewology website. So if you head across to, to the store pages at, at this web address here, um, you'll, you'll see that the PS3 has an actual homebrew store. So we can just click on the homebrew link at the left and you, you'll get then a long list of software that we can install onto our hacked PS3. Now, now these soft bits of software are filed in sections. So using the links across the top of the page, you, you'll see we have apps and emulators and, and so on. Now, most of these apps will work on the PS3 hen mod, um, but do check the descriptions as uh, some of them are only available then for custom firmware modded um, PS3s. But you'll, you'll find that most of the things that you will want to run like emulators and, and these sort of um, game launchers, um, they, they will work on both versions. Now, however, um, we actually want to get hold of Multiman, which is sort of the, the, the de facto standard for PS3. So there is a dedicated link there on the left to go off and get hold of the bits and pieces that, that are used for there. So, so once you get to the Multiman section, um, it's going to open up and you can, you can just simply um, scroll down to find the actual Multiman app itself. And if you click on that, it will open up its description. And on the bottom of that description, there is then a download list. So there's a range of versions here, um, but we want then, because we're using PS3 Hen, there is a specific Hen version listed here. Um, so you can see here um, the unofficial Multiman and across on the... On the um, version number there is the word hen there so so don't worry about that version number um it isn't matching uh, the firm the firmware that we're currently using but it, it has been tested out as you can see on the list above there it, it gives you a list of all the versions that it's compatible with uh, and on our 4.91 of course is in there so it, it does work with all the current versions 
So um, just simply click that download button and it should then download a .pkj package file. And again, if you get any um, warnings about it not being um, a, a secure file or, or unrecognized file, just go into your download system and make sure that you verify that you want to download it. So now that we have that all saved onto our PC, we've actually got everything that we need. So now we need to transfer this downloaded code then onto our USB drive so that we can transfer that across then to our PS3. So make sure that your USB drive is formatted as an FAT32 drive. And again, if you're not sure what to do, just refer back to my tutorial on how to do that. So on this drive then, in the root of the drive, we need to create a folder called PS3. Uh, and that needs to be all capitals. Then inside that folder, we then need to create a folder called update, again, all capitals. Now, once we've got those two folders created, we then can copy our downloaded HFW file across into this update folder. Now, the, the, the HFW file does need to be a .pub file, which it, it should be if you've downloaded it from the PS3 exploit website. But do check that you can um, actually um, see the file name extension. So if, if you can't see the file name extension um, after the file name, then just go to your view menu and enable um, extensions. So once we've got that um, .pub file there, we just need to rename it so that the PS3 finds the correct file. So it needs to be renamed to PS3 updat. So PS3 UPDAT. And that needs to be all in capitals. Uh, and again, then with the .pup extension after it. Um, if, if we don't have it named as that, then the console isn't going to find it. So that's our firmware file all ready and in the correct place. So next we need to copy over that multiman.pkg file. And that simply needs to then go into the root folder of our USB drive. And you can just keep the name as it is, even if it's um, like I have here, a, a quite a long name. So that's um, everything set up. So let's now jump onto the console and start installing all this stuff. So with the USB drive plugged into the console, Use your XMB to navigate to either the music section or the video section. So under, under either of these, you should then see the, your USB drive listed. And that means that the console has recognized it and is able to start reading from it. So we're now going to use that HFW file to update the firmware on our console. Now the general opinion is that you do need to do this process twice to make sure that we completely overwrite the existing firmware. And as there are actually two methods of running the update, um, well, I'm going to take you through both of those. So the first method then is to try the normal system update option. And you'll find that in the console settings menu. So use your cross menu bar to navigate across to the settings. And then at the top of that menu, you'll find the system update option. So select that. And then we need to say that we want to update via our storage media and then just simply click your X button. So the PS3 should now look and find our HFW file, uh, and then it will offer to install that for you. So click X to accept that, and the PS3 will copy that update file across onto its internal hard drive. So once that file's copied over, um, it will reboot into the system update mode. And it'll start then by just checking to make sure that that update file is okay and then start the actual installation process itself. Now you, you may find, uh, depending on your console, that you end up going, first of all, through a terms and conditions page. So just work, work your way through the instructions on screen and eventually you'll end up in the same situation where the actual software is being installed. So just let that run through. And once it's finished, the system will restart and that will then reboot you back into your cross menu bar. And we have completed our first uh, firmware update. Now, this method can sometimes fail. Uh, you might get an error message saying that you've already updated to this version or, or, or something along those lines. If you do get that error, then this second method we're going to go through now, um, that will work for you. So, so don't, don't worry, just move on to the second method. Now, if, if you have completed that, 
and you've rebooted, um, you will find that everything looks exactly the same as it did before. There, there's no sign of this PS3 hen. And that's because we haven't yet activated it. So we're gonna complete this installation process. Everything will still look exactly the same uh, and then we'll get through to actually in, um, activating that. So if that XMB settings method hasn't worked, uh, or if you just fancy a change, uh, we can run the installation using what's known as safe mode. So this method puts the console into a special state where we can force it to run our updates. So first of all, obviously we have to get our console into safe mode. We're also gonna need an original Sony and PlayStation controller, and that needs to be connected to the console using its mini USB cable. Uh, while we're in safe mode, our wireless link isn't going to be active. So once you've got that, next you need to turn off the console by holding the PlayStation button on the controller and then selecting the turn off system option. And, and that should power down the system. So now we're going to need to perform a series of power button presses. So with the console powered off, hold down the power button, but keep it pressed in. So the PS3 is going to power on. And then as you continue to hold the power button, it's going to beep and eventually then it will turn itself off. So at this point, just release the power button. Now, we now need to repeat this process. So we're gonna hold down the power button again. The console will beep and power on, but just simply keep that power button pressed down. And what we're waiting for here is an actual double beep. So, so you may hear another single beep um, first, but just ignore that until you get to two fast beeps that will come together. Uh, at that point then, just release the power button. If you then look, um, your console should now be booted into this safe mode, uh, and it will probably start off by just simply prompting you to connect your controller via USB. So, so if you haven't done that already, do so, uh, and then just press the PlayStation button. So this should bring up your safe mode menu. And as you can see, there are a range of things you can do in here to help sort of rebuild and recover your system. So we of course want to go down to option number six, which is our system update, and then just select that. It will now ask us to confirm we have our storage media connected, and we just need to press our start and select buttons together. And at this point, it will now check our file to make sure everything's okay. And, and this process can take a little bit of time, so, so just let it run through. But once it's happy with that file, it will then start to get ready to update. So again, it's, it's gonna prepare the system, so let that run through, and then the system will reboot and drop us into the update mode. So you should see it just confirming then we have our 4.9 HFW update. So just press your PlayStation button. The system will now check that update file and it should drop you into the terms and conditions screen. So here you can use your D-pad to scroll through the license agreement. And once you're happy with that, press the right button, accept the terms, it will give you a final confirmation here, so just um, press your X button to confirm that, and then the actual installation will start. So just let that run through, and then the system will reboot. Now with this method, once it reboots, you may come into a screen where it asks you to confirm your HDMI and your video and your audio settings. But just work your way through those and just confirming that, and then the system should take you right back into your XMB. And that then is this particular update completed. Now, as I did mention earlier, um, it is advised to run the update twice. Now I have seen tutorials that just use one update, but I have seen that the two update method is used to make sure that the ROS0 and ROS1 regions in the firmware NAND memory are actually then made the same. So um, I, I would advise doing it twice. And you can use any combinations of these two methods that works for you. So that's our system software all updated. Now at this point we have an optional step. So if you want to use your PlayStation on the PlayStation Network, then we do need to sign in and activate that. Now that does give you the advantage then. Um, there are certain games that do require that activation to help with licensing and so on. And if you want to do it now, it's actually just an easier process because um, you can just simply use the normal sign in and activation um, process just from the XMB here. Now we can do it at a later date, um, but that does require the help of a homebrew app to do that. 
So I'm just going to leave mine for now because um, obviously I'll want to make a video to show you how to do that after we've fully installed and activated our PH3HEN um, modifications. Well, we, we've now got everything ready then to install and activate the actual PS3HEN code. So for this, we're going to need internet access as we have to browse back to that PS3 exploit website. So make sure that that's all set up in your network settings and then go into the network section on the XMB and select your internet browser. So when the browser opens up, we're going to need to change some of the settings. So if you click the triangle button, that will open up the right hand menu. Go up to your tools option and then select confirm browser close and, and make sure that this is turned off. So this setting will help PS3 Hen um, to work just a bit more slickly uh, by not requiring a manual confirmation whenever it tries to close the browser app. So next we need to go back into our tools menu and then set the browser home page to a blank page and that will just stop it trying to load anything when it first starts up. So next we actually do need to clean up all the browser cache data. So again back into your tool menu and you're going to see four delete options um, in here. So for deleting cookies, history, the cache and then authentication information. So you have to go through each one of these in turn and make sure that you delete those caches and that will completely clean out our browser. So we can now exit out of the browser by pressing the circle button and that then as I said should give us a completely clean system. So we now need to go back into the internet browser and you should of course be met now with a blank page and again this helps keep that browser cache clear for us. We now need to visit a website so press the start button to bring up the address input and enter the address for the PS3 exploit website. And again, uh, do make sure you get it exactly as it is here. So HTTP colon slash slash PS3XPLOIT.me. Remember, there's no E in the exploit. So when that website opens up, um, again, this is the same website that we use to download our firmware file, but it also contains the code to actually activate our firmware. When the page opens up, um, you, you may get a small pop-up here which has a message on what's going on with the system, but just click OK to hide that. Now, the first thing that we really want to do is to bookmark this page uh, as, as we may be coming back here from time to time. So if you hit the select button on your controller and then just simply add this page to your bookmarks. So we can now close that pop-up and return back to the web page. So we finally got to the stage where we'll actually install the PS3 Hen software. So use your joystick control to move the mouse up to the PS3 Hen menu at the top of the page and then select the Hen auto installer option from the drop down. So this option is going to do a lot of the installation work for you and it will just get everything set up into a working state. If, if you do want more control over the setup and you know what you're doing, then please do have a look through the documentation and these other options then of course are the ones you'll be using. So once we've selected that, we should get to a page um, which will open up in a new tab and it should automatically start to download the PS3 HEN files. So just let those download. Uh, and once that's ready, just hit the circle button to return to this installer page. Now again, it's worth bookmarking this page, so use your select button again and, and, and bookmark that. Now, we now need to close out of the browser uh, and that will then let the system reset itself and make sure that these downloaded files are, are ready for our next session. So once you've closed it, just simply reopen it again, but this time we're going to use our select button to bring back up our bookmarks and we're going to go back to that auto installer page. Now again, it's going to try to download that same file as before. Um, so here, just do make sure that you save it and overwrite the existing file. Now once that's done, hit the circle button to get back to the page. And we're now going to click on that button, which is the auto install, in, install hen button. Uh, so just move your mouse over to that and click the X and that will start the actual installer. Now, now this installation uh, is going to be in a number of stages. So first off then, we should get an initialized message um, coming up uh, and then the software is going to launch that payload and close out our browser. 
So we're going to see a series of messages popping up before it actually starts to download a um, package file. Now this process can be a bit hit and miss, so don't be disappointed if it goes wrong. If it does, just go back into your browser and re-click that auto-install hen button again until it actually does run its way through. So if everything's going okay um, and that download completes, um, just click the circle button um, to get back and the package file should then automatically start to install. So just wait for that to finish. And once it does, it, the console is going to reboot itself. So at this point, um, the console will reboot and you should be taken over to the game menu. And if everything's gone correctly, you will see a new option to enable hen. So this is how we actually turn on the hen hack. So select that and you'll see the system um, this first time through running through a series of steps which will enable the actual hen software and then it will drop you back into the XMB screen. But hopefully, if everything has installed correctly and HEN has been enabled, you'll be back into your menu and underneath that enable HEN listing, you should now see a package manager listing. If you can see that, then PS3 HEN is all set up correctly and it is now running and enabled on your PS3 and you're now running a homebrewed PS3. So now that we've got Homebrew up and running, I suppose we should really add some Homebrew applications. And of course, we actually put one of those onto our USB stick whenever we were setting up. So we have Multiman already on our USB drive as a package file. So let's just go along and install that now. So we need to open up Package Manager and then select the Install Package option. Now you'll see there are a number of options on where to install the packages from. So of course we put it um, into the root folder of our USB drive. So make sure that that's connected up and then select the standard option. You should now see the Multiman package file listed along with any other packages that you had downloaded. So let's select Multiman and then um, uh, action that with the X button. So this will now copy the code to the internal hard drive and then start the package install process. So this is going to take a few seconds to complete. But once that's finished then, we can just click on the circle button and that should then return us to the XMB and we should then see the Multiman icon sitting in our games list. So we can actually start that then by just simply selecting it. And since this is the first time we've run the app, uh, we'll probably need to go through a number of sort of OK screens and just so the app can get itself set up. And then once that's all finished and it's rebooted itself, um, we are now running inside Multiman. Now, one of the first things you'll probably notice once we get into this system is that we do have this background music. Now, if like me um, and you prefer to have a bit of silence, we can turn that off. So if you go across into the settings and then scroll down, and it is quite a bit down in this list. And we're looking here for uh, an option called theme audio. If you find that, then use the right button on the D-pad and then we can disable that. And that will just silence this background music for us. Now, Multiman is an incredibly useful application. Um, so it does allow us to do a whole range of things with our homebrewed PS3. But one of the main things that we're going to use it, of course, for is to play games. Now, Multiman is packed with useful tools to help us work with our hacked PS3. But the main thing that most of us will want to use it for, of course, is to play games. Now, Multiman lets us play games from the original DVDs and also from backup files on a USB drive. But it will also let us copy those games to our internal hard drive and then play them from there. So I've got a DVD for Gran Turismo in my console, so I could obviously just launch that as normal and play the game. But if I select the game and then click the triangle button, I get a range of options popping up. And one of those is to copy the game. So if I select that, the system will then prompt me where I want to put that game. So again, I've got a choice here of my hard drive or my USB drive. So if I select my hard drive and just confirm that, the system will now start copying all of the game files across from there to a games folder on my internal hard drive. This is obviously going to take a while to run through because we've got sort of 14 gigabytes of data. So, so let me just pause the video here and rejoin once that's all up and running. 
So Multiman has basically ripped the DVD and put it onto my hard drive. And so you see a list of files here, so I can just press square to accept that. And I now have two versions of my game. So one is on my disc and one is on my hard drive. So if I now eject the disc out of my console, you can see that I'm now just left with my hard drive version. So if I now select that to try and run it, you'll find that Multiman is going through a process here. So it's going to verify my data and then it's going to actually mount that hard drive file as a DVD and drop me back into my normal XMB. And I will now find that I have that game listed as if it was a DVD sitting on my normal system. And if I try and run that then, it will just run as normal. And as the system thinks that it's just a DVD, if I check my garage, you'll see that all of my saved data is all in there ready for me to just pick up from where I left off on the actual game DVD. So of course, we will sometimes want to work directly from our ready-made backup files. So, so I have a game, some game backup files here on my hard drive. And again, these are as seven zip files. So I, I, you will need some application that allows you to extract these out, depending of course on, on what type of um, archive file you've got. So I've got um, a Shampoo um, Z, um, Zip Pro installed on my computer. So I can just simply right click on that and I'm going to extract those game files then into a folder on my hard drive. So once that's extracted out, if we have a look inside that folder, you can see there that we have the actual game itself in here. And again, I've, I've downloaded this from a place called Vim's Lair. And inside that, we've actually got the game files themselves. So what we need to do is we need to copy this game folder here across onto our USB drive. But we do need to put it into a folder on here. So I want to create a new folder on my USB drive. And that wants to be called games in all capitals. So that's where I want. And that's where I need to then copy across this game folder. So I'm simply going to drag it across and drop it inside my games folder on my USB drive. Now, to be honest, um, that transfer was taking one hell of a long time. That was uh, an old USB drive I was using. So I, I, I tend to, for my Xbox and so on, I use an SSD to transfer these game files around. So I've plugged in my SSD now. And as you can see, the, the game transfer is going one hell of a lot faster with that. So let's just give that a few seconds to finish off. So there we have, um, that's copied across now. So on my SSD drive, I now have a games folder, which has got my PS3 game sitting in there. And again, if I if I go up one directory folder, you'll see um, th these are all Xbox games sitting in here, but I now do have my PS3. And this games folder is what Multiman is going to be looking for on my USB drive. So let's take us across now to our PS3 and see if we can now copy that um, game onto our hard drive and actually play it from there. So back on our PSP, I have already started up Multiman and I'm just about to plug in my USB um, drive. So it's been detected and you can see it's scanned that games folder and it's found Dead Space 2 sitting in there. So if I now select that game and use my triangle button to get to the menu, I can go back to my copy function. Again, it's asking me if I want to put it onto my hard drive and just confirming that. And again, that will now copy those game files across onto my internal hard drive. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time, obviously, to copy those across. So let, let, let's let that run through first. So if I now look on my uh, Multiman game list, you can see I have two versions of the game here, one on my USB drive, one on my hard disk drive. So if I unplug the USB drive, we should find one of those disappears. And now I just left my hard drive version. So if I select that uh, to, to run it, it will now, um, as I said, it will now remount that then as a DVD drive inside my main XMB menu. And hopefully that will then come back up in here. And there we have Dead Space now running as a DVD drive in my main system. So if I select that, we should be able to then um, run this game. And I think this game does go through an installation process at the beginning. 
So once that's installed itself, we can just say yes, and that should now boot up the actual game. And again, all of this is now running from our hard disk drive as if we had plugged in our DVD into the console. So really, that should give you everything you need to know to get up and running with your PlayStation 3 using this PS3 Hen homebrew enabler. So obviously, we've only just touched the surface of what is possible with a PlayStation 3. Uh, so I will be over the next few weeks making a number of other videos then where we're going to expand upon that. So we'll be having a look um, obviously at the full custom firmware hack so we can get access to the entire homebrew system. Uh, and again, that of course then is going to be for fat models and the early slim models. We'll be doing a lot more stuff where, which will be both compatible with both the PS3 Hen system and the custom firmware system. And to be honest, most of what you will want to do will work on either system. There's only a few bits and pieces that won't work on PS3 Hen. So we'll be looking at things like um, emulation, um, actual homebrew games themselves. I'll be doing a much more in-depth video on, on how to set up your, your game backups and work with those in a much more um, full full manner. So we're covering things like that. So if you have enjoyed this, if you think that using the PlayStation 3 is something you want to get more involved with, then do make sure that you subscribe to the channel, click that like button, hit that notification bar, uh, and just make sure that you're ready then for any of the videos as I release them. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.